No, on the one that I thought was humorous. I read it and I went, man, I played in that. But I played it in about 22 years ago, so I'm amazed that it was that long. It's the 33rd year, 33rd year of the Cleveland Dart Extravaganza. As you can tell, it's early in the morning. I'm stumbling on everything here. 33rd Cleveland Dart Extravaganza. I was there 22 years ago. Rob Paris and I headed down with my mother and father down to South of Cleveland. We played in... Um, Oh, heck, I don't even remember where it was. The Red Roof Inn, or I can't remember where the tournament was. In the south end of Cleveland. Anyway, interesting place. You don't want to get lost there. But it was a fun spot and a great place for a dart tournament. I remember I made it to, I think I ended up in the quarterfinals, uh, a cricket singles. Let's go back 22 years ago. I was 13. Um, anyway, had a blast. Cricket was my game for some reason. I just used to screw people up. I used to throw the ball after the 18 and... Uh, if you own the bowl after the 18, you, you can make stride, especially against somebody um, not expecting it out of a 13-year-old. So I remember taking Andy Green to the fifth game, I think it was, in, in cricket down there. Andy was a great player, uh, sponsored by Unicorn, I believe, back then. Um, so I had a lot of fun. Anyway, that's my definite memory of Cleveland. That and playing video games all weekend. They had a great arcade in the hotel, and we played some off-road game. I probably blew through $50 in quarters that weekend playing some off-road game. Anyway, great memory of mine from when I was 13. But this weekend, if you're anywhere near the Ohio, um, Michigan, I'm sure there's going to be Canadians down there. $13,000 in the Cleveland Dart Extravaganza. Uh, tournament location and accommodations, the Cleveland area, Airport Marriott. Um, not the same place I used to play in. But anyway, it's out of Marriott, Cleveland. Great opportunity. If you need more information, get to darter.org slash extravaganza.htm or just go to Bullseye News. As always, best place for information on dart tournaments, bullseyenews.com. Um, two other decent tournaments going on in the United States. One in Texas, the Bayou Gator Shootout, $7,500 in Beaumont, Texas. Or get over to the Rude Dog Open. Man, I go to this tournament just for the name of it. $5,400 over in Virginia Beach, the Rude Dog Open. Anyway, sounds like a lot of fun, and American tournaments always are. Um, a lot of diehards, a lot of great events, and a lot of chance to meet other darters. What a great other possibility, not only um, increasing your dart ability at these tournaments and events, watching great players to learn from them as well, and chalking. I've always said the greatest way to learn how to play the game, besides playing it, chalk. You see more opportunities at outs and how people play to take out 83 out of your standard way and, and things like 90. Do you throw the 20? Do you throw the bowl? Do you throw the 54? Go to tournaments and chalk and you're going to find a lot of the great players and see how they play. Again, most important thing to this game is finishing when you're playing 501, hitting the double and knowing the outs. As John Parts told us, it's more important to practice your finishes than to practice the triple 20. Like golf, you can stand on the driving range all day long and smack a driver and hit the ball as far as you can, but really the game is won and lost around the putting and around chipping around the green. So, important thing about darts, get out there, have fun, meet people, enjoy it, do some chalking, learn about the game, and get out to some of these great events. Now, one of the biggest things I think we're always asked here, not only about what, are, what, what makes a great dart for me, how do I enjoy the game and such, are people coming in saying, you know, I bought this set of darts, but when you close the case, it crushes my flights. More cases that are sold with dart sets are usually not meant for people to travel around with. Um, it's fine for those that take darts home, leave the flights on them and tuck them away in a drawer or a display case or a cabinet or, or such to it. Um, but for people getting out and playing in leagues, playing in tournaments, you need to travel. Extra flights, extra shafts, and you got to keep the darts, you know, it's great if you can leave the flights on. Because more flights get ruined, and I will step up and say this, more flights get ruined by people taking them on and off the shafts, especially aluminum shafts. They rip apart your dart flights. Um, so more dart flights can get ruined by always taking them on and off the darts when you're done playing. So it's extremely important to have cases where you can leave the flights on. And the NDFC, I know we've talked about it before in the show, I know Kelly went over mentioning it, but the NDFC has the greatest lineup of cases, inexpensive enough too, especially if you're a couple out traveling around or, my goodness, you got to carry the darts for the entire team. Something like this Pro Case from the NDFC, you can easily fit four or five sets of darts in here um, through the different areas, hold lots of extra flights, shafts, chalkers. You can even throw the schedule in there for the leak, for crying out loud. You fit a ton of stuff in something like this. The NDFC Pro Case, this thing's only like $45. And if you compare it to, oh my goodness, what kids have to carry hockey equipment around in or other sports and bags and such, $45 for something to keep darts in for the rest of your life, not a bad idea. 
even getting smaller for those of you that may only carry two sets, something like this, $17. Great little NDFC case. This could easily hold, I believe, two sets. Oh yeah, definitely fit two sets of darts in there. Lots of flights, lots of shafts. And for some ladies that like carrying darts in their purse, this is even small enough. You can throw the darts in there, leave the flights on. Flight shafts over here, zips up like a glass case. And I know many of you probably carry your glasses in your purse, well, ladies. This will easily fit in there. And these guys, NDFC as well, $15. Now, to the most important thing about all this, being the NDFC products, the supplier, BY Group in Toronto for the NDFC, um, actually kicks a lot of money back into National Darts Federation of Canada, which means money passes itself on down into the youth program. So, not only are you buying a great case, NDFC logo, something to store your darts, leave your flights on so you're not ruining them all the time, but money is actually going to make its way back to the youth players of the country, um, get them off to England for world championships, uh, and also sort of support the game, um, bring up some exposure to it. And again, National Darts Federation of Canada, the you know body of dart players, um, and the you know opportunity for people to get off to the World Cup, to the World Championships and such to it. So uh, an immensely important organization to support and do so by buying some cases. Anyway, lots of information. Hope you enjoyed it. And again, I apologize that episode that we shot with Julian Dressler. We re really wish we could edit um, and get it online, but hopefully um, I passed off some of, uh, some of the content from it. We certainly learned a lot from Julian. And again, the Aurora New Market area, what a great spot to play in the league. You've got an executive that really cares. Anyway, everybody, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.